Hello oh, and welcome to the news at 7 on NTA International, reaching you live from Abuja. I am Juma Yusuf. First, the headlines. Federal government to adapt community policing approach to tackling insecurity. Information minister to show Argungu fishing. Thanks for rejoining us. We begin with a focus on health matters as a new virus that has killed nine people, infected hundreds, and already reached the United States could mutate and spread. China warned Wednesday as authorities scrambled to contain the disease during the Lunar New Year travel season. The coronavirus has caused alarm for its similarity to SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome, which killed nearly 650 people across mainland China and Hong Kong in 2002 to 2003. In Wuhan, the epicenter of the outbreak, authorities cancelled large public events and urged visitors to stay away, telling residents not to leave the central Chinese city of 11 million people. The illness is mainly transmitted via the respiratory tract and there is the possibility of viral mutation and further spread of the disease. National Health Commission Vice Minister Lim Bin says at a news conference in Beijing. Back home in Nigeria, with the outbreak of coronavirus in Asia, the federal government is taking measures towards ensuring that all passengers coming into the country through the nation's airports are quarantined. Federal Ministry of Health, in collaboration with the Federal Airport Authority, has activated all thermal scanners in her airports that monitor temperature of passengers and capture their pictures. A statement by Harriet Yakubu, General Manager, Corporate Affairs, Federal Airport Authority, therefore advised passengers to submit themselves for routine quarantine checks whenever they are asked to. Recently, a deadly virus known as coronavirus broke out in China and has since killed six people, with over 300 also reported to have been infected. The virus is highly communicable and has already spread to other countries like Japan, Thailand and South Korea. What may appear to be a routine function of the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, to predict rainfall is receiving widespread commendation by Nigerians. On Ngiye Fine Face reports on some thoughts shared by stakeholders on the impact of the forecast to national development. NIMET's 2020 rainfall prediction is predicated on the importance of climate information for effective decision making and the management and functioning of sectors of the society like agriculture, health, transportation, emergency management, among others. What NIMET might need to do is to distill this further and then have it reduced in manners that it's understandable by local communities and a lot of graphics would be helpful you know and community engagements one-on-one -on -one community engagements will help engagement with farming communities consciousness about climatic changes and extreme weather conditions informed the decision of NIMET to release the prediction early to allow for sectoral planning and mitigation of associated challenges that may arise reliable weather forecasts are tremendously important for all society and flooding and other extreme weather events continue to be some of the great challenges that confront our dear nation as the climate gets warmer. Agriculture is a major sector that benefits from the prediction, especially with expected increase in false start of rainfall and dry spell in parts of the country. In addition to releasing rainfall prediction for the new year 2020, NIMET also released the 2019 Climatic Review Bulletin to guide researchers in undertaking climate-related studies. Focus information provided in the document include the onset and succession dates of the rainy season, the length of the cropping season, the total amount of rainfall expected in the 774 local government areas of the country, temperature as well as malaria and meningitis forecast. Early release of the prediction the aviation minister believes will support the federal government to implement infrastructure projects. In Abuja, on Nengie, Fine Face, NTA News. 
Thank you, Onengye. I have with me the Director General of Nigeria Meteorological Agency, Professor Sani Mashi, to talk more on the weather outlook for the year 2020. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Happy to be with you. Thank you. Uh, quite, uh, quite an early prediction this year with the statistics re released by agency 2020 rain predictions. What will be the impact of this on Nigeria? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, specifically in the predictions, uh, we have been able to identify a number of uh, events related to weather in 2020 that are likely to have direct impact uh, on the life of uh, Nigerians. Uh, but uh, in summary, there, there are five that are a little bit uh, outstanding. One of which there is going to be what we call a false start to the commencement of rain. What false start means is we are likely uh, going to witness a number of random rampant events which are earlier than the established period where rains would commence in different parts of the country. So these are rains that you receive, but they are not significant enough to allow you to start planting. So uh, the planting, uh, the expected effective commencement date of uh, what we call the onset uh, date of the rain, where you have predicted is actually starting from uh, uh, around uh, February uh, in coastal part of the country until around June in the northern part of the country. So if uh, farmers rely on the false start, they are likely going to waste so much uh, time, energy, and resources uh, there in planting a seed when they are not supposed to plant. We also uh, made predictions concerning the amount of rain that is going to be received. Because of the changes in the climate, we are expecting um, too, a so high amount of rain to be received over a shorter period of time between the month of July and August. This is invariably going to have serious implications, particularly on flooding. Another important uh, uh, prediction we have made is what we call a little dry season, which we call the dry spell, is going to be witnessed for a period of 10 to 21 days within the period when planting has already started, for instance in July. When this happens, it means even if crops do not completely die, it means they are going to uh, witness some retardation in their growth period. And then the fifth one, which is also very critical, has to do with the temperature. Night temperatures are likely going to be high, especially within the month of March, end of February, March and April. The implication of this, it means in the night you are going to witness high temperatures in this period and this coincides with the time when people are supposed to go back to their rooms and to be sleeping, which means the risk for uh, Contami, uh, 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 contracting diseases that are related to heat are uh, going to be extremely high within the year. So yes, these are some I, of the If highlights. I might come in there, you, yeah. you talked about having spells of drought across the country during the rainy season. Can you please specify in the north how long do we expect to experience drought? Yeah, what we mean, we call it little drought because these are droughts that we witness during the cropping period. Rain have already started, farmers have planted their crops, the crops have started growing, then suddenly the rain will cease. Uh, this is expected between the month of uh, July and the uh, uh, early part of August. Uh, for some location, it will be little 10 days. For some location, it will be as much as 20 days. When rains are not received for up to 10 days, and crops are already growing, then it means you can imagine what is likely going to be uh, the consequences. So, so what will be the impact 21. of this on food production? The, yeah, the impact of this, it means the expected output of the crop will definitely drop low. So that is what the advice we gave is that farmers should prepare for this period. In the prediction we have given, we have given precise dates when every location is expected to have this drought. So if you know the time you are expecting this drought, it means you are supposed to take some precautionary measures in order to minimize the impact of this drought. If you don't do that, it means your crop may not die completely, but the actual product output of that crop may definitely decline. When you are expecting 10 bucks, for instance, you may end up with 7 or 8 which means this can translate into so much economic losses to you as a farmer. This okay, is it. Okay, before I let you go, can you please tell me how can farmers in the rural areas access this kind of information? So yeah, we what we have done, yes. this year we have downscaled to the level of the local governments and uh, we are preparing to go to the various state so that within every local government we are going to do what we call local level downscaling so that we will downscale it to the lowest level that is at the farming household level. So that is why we have appealed to the state government to partner with the agency so that when we come to the state, we partner with them so that we can go to 
to the lowest level and make this information available. Something more importantly, this year we have reached a, a consensus that we are going to translate this document into all the major understandable languages in the country okay. so that the farmers should be able also to have them. We have a, a, an e-platform also where we are going to be making this information available so that at the tip of our their access to through their mobile farm farmers can be able to have access to them these are plans we have for the farmers okay thank you so much for your input thank it's been you a pleasure having you on the seven o'clock news on nt international it's been a pleasure thank you thank i you have been much. speaking with the general director general of nigeria meteorological agency professor sani mashi We've talked on the weather outlook for the year 2020. Now moving on, the federal government has concluded plans to establish agro-allied industry in eight senatorial districts in the country as part of efforts towards sustaining food security and economic growth. This is coming as the present administration saved over 5.4 billion naira on rice importation into the country. Details of this was Musa Baba Ali. Demand and supply of agricultural produce from local market have been on the increase in recent times, following the federal government's policy on let's eat what we produce and produce what we eat. This therefore brought about the demand for agro-allied industries in farming communities to address issues relating to post-harvest losses. It is in the light of this that the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment was directed to look into the possibility of establishing agro-allied industry in every senatorial district. There are a lot of products that come back into the country. There are products that have been taken as raw materials from Nigeria. So we also need to add to that value chain so that it is not just the grains that we're sending out, but we're sending either finished or semi-finished goods. Agriculturists are of the view that value addition and certification of the food produce we are German in order to generate additional revenue as well as meet international standards for export. In the meantime, the Nigeria Export Promotion Council says the federal government has saved over 5.4 billion naira on rice importation policy. Uh, this is due to the drop of importation of the commodity from 4.5 million tons annually to 0 0.8 tons. The Buhari Media Organization attributed the achievement to deliberate policies implementation by the Buhari administration to fulfill its promise on self-sufficiency in food production. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. You're still watching the news on NTA International. Stay tuned for more reports after this time out. Don't go away. We be seen now today or four days when my girls won't come visit me. I need to come go expire. Oh, but my guys, they can't follow me. Watch this match. I'm also for the hand. Hey. Babe, what's happening now? Sorry to disappoint you, but my subscription don't expire. The match is not on my Go TV package. Now your wallet be that. I beg, give me your phone. Look, I show you how you go take Dua for my Go TV app for your phone. Life is so much easier with my Go TV app. Make payments, clear error messages, change wow. your package. You can also check your due dates and keep abreast wow. of your payment history. Ah. Oh. Oh. The new My Go TV app is everything you need in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download My Go TV app now from Google Play or App Store to enjoy the easy life. Go TV, live it, love it. NTA International News, Africa as it is. Thanks for rejoining us. Now to tourism. The federal government says it will use the ongoing United Nations World Tourism Organization's International Tourism Trade Fair, FITO, to market the forthcoming Argungu Fishing Festival to global investors. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed stated this on the sidelines of FITO in Madrid, Spain. Anthony Fossen tells us more. In the last 40 years, Madrid, the capital city of Spain, has remained the host city of the International Tourism Trade Fair, otherwise known as FITU. The tourism fair has remained a global meeting point for professionals and the leader for source markets of Latin America. It has also remained the privileged forum for the global tourism industry and business tool that encourage and promote business contacts and agreements. At this year's edition with a focus on Africa, 
African ministers, alongside other dignitaries, were hosted to a dinner by the King of Spain, Felipe VI. He formally said, welcome in a warm handshake. Then spoke on the place of tourism on global economy. The Madrid Declaration on Tourism in the 21st Century incorporates the political, economic, social, employment and cultural dimensions of tourism into the context of the goals of the 2030 Agenda. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed said Futo 2020 will give Nigeria the opportunity to market one of its rare festivals. The Arugungu Fish and Culture Festival is the only one of its type. We're talking about a festival which encompasses virtually every aspect of the cultural lives of our people from, uh, from boating to uh, traditional wrestling to uh, dobas and uh, to competitions uh, to, between um, different age groups in different cultural areas. But the unique thing about our you know, um, fishing and cultural festival is that it's the only one we know in the world today where fishing is actually encouraged through the traditional you know, fishing methods, especially you know, using one's hands to catch, to catch a, a fish. Uh, so we are here also to Propagate, uh, propagate and also market the Argungu uh, Fishing uh, uh, Festival. He also said the many giant strides the federal government of Nigeria has taken in developing tourism will also be brought to the fore. There is a conscious effort all over the world today to see how we can redirect this spend, these resources to the rural areas. And this is one of the major, uh, you know, uh, uh, attractions of this particular um, feature. Fortunately for us in Nigeria, we have already also aligned our tourism vision to uh, shift attention to rural tourism. Uh, this is why we can see that we're encouraging, you know, uh, uh, um, palace museums. We're encouraging uh, museums in churches. We're encouraging museums in you know place of worship, because at the end of the day, it is the people that are actually the owners of these cultural sites, the owners of these cultural uh, in a intangible um, assets and assets. The minister will be on a panel to discuss tourism investment and business forum for Africa. In Madrid, Spain, Anthony Forson, NTA News. To security now, the federal government is adopting community policing approach towards addressing the perennial security challenges confronting the country. The Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Abubakar Adamu, who announced this at a 2020 North Central Police Regional Security Summit in Nasara State, said the federal government is committed to improving the operational capacity of the police to fight crime. The governors of the zones, traditional rulers and order stakeholders adopted the strategic community policing initiative and pledged to work towards its success. The cases, in all the cases, experiences of anarchy, lawlessness, agitations, terrorism, banditry, kidnapping among others occur at the community level. Therefore, mobilizing for the participation of the citizens in securing their communities, especially at the local level, is a key strategy that the government is determined to employ in its efforts to provide total security for the citizens. The governors of the zone, traditional rulers and other stakeholders adopted the Strategic Community Policing Initiative and pledged to work towards its success. Now, President Muhammadu Buhari has strongly condemned the
the terrorist killing of Lawan Andimi, chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, in Michika, local government area of Adamawa State, describing it as cruel, inhuman, and deliberately provocating. In a statement by the senior special assistant on media and publicity, Garbashehu, President Buhari expressed sorrow that the terrorists went on to kill the religious leader while giving signals at the same time of willingness to set him free by releasing him to third parties. The Northern Governors Forum has condemned the alleged gruesome murder of Reverend Lawan Adimi, who was the local council chapter chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, and also a pastor with the Church of the Brethren at the District Church Council of Michika, Adama State, by terrorist group. In a statement, chairman of the Northern Governors Forum and Plateau State Governor Samuel Lalo described the act as yet another sad tale of the inhuman activities of the terrorist group which is bent on unleashing sorrow in the hearts of Nigerians. While commiserating with the family of the late clergyman, the church and people of Adamao State, Lalong urged them not to allow the ugly incident affect their faith in God and love for humanity, as the death of the late clergyman cannot be a catalyst for hatred among Nigerians who are disgusted by the cruelty of this terrorist organization. Governor Lalong emphasized that, that the Northern Governors Forum stands shoulder to shoulder with President Muhammad Buhari as he rallies the world towards defeating terror groups and their sponsors as well as the purveyors of their bizarre ideology which propagates sorrow, hatred and pain on innocent persons in the name of religion and order claims. Now on the international scene, the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump has begun, a week after senators took oath to do impartial justice during the trial. Adebola Brooks on Sunday has an overview of the impeachment trial. For the third time in history, an American president is facing an impeachment trial, a trial that could, in theory, lead to President Donald Trump being removed from office. But let me give you a quick rundown of some of the issues that have transpired so far. In August 2019, a whistleblower made allegations against President Trump. And between October and December of the same year, investigation took place with hearings in the House of Representatives, also known as the Lower House of Congress, controlled by Mr. Trump's Democratic rivals. In December 2019, Democratic leaders from the House voted to impeach President Donald Trump. And just last week, the case was passed up to the Senate, controlled by Mr. Trump's Republicans, where the trial is currently taking place. We are not sure if the Senate will accede uh, to the impeachment decision of the House of Reps because the impeachment in the House of Reps was not bipartisan. For about 13 hours of rancorous debate on the first day, Senate adopted a ground rule for the trial. What is your take on this? It's not a place where you see a uh, movement of resources to sway votes or to sway people from one position to the other. And that's a lesson that I think we can derive, that we can take away from this process that is currently going on in America. In the adopted rules, the House managers and Mr. Trump's lawyers will each have 24 hours, which started Wednesday afternoon to argue their cases for and against the articles of impeachment. Then senators will have 16 hours to ask questions submitted in writing. That is likely to happen early next week. President Trump is charged with abuse of power and obstructing congressional inquiry, an accusation he denied. The only other president that faced impeachment trial in the United States of America is Bill Clinton in 1999, and he survived. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Indeed, Adebola and the world is watching. Still on foreign news, Uchi Ogochuku has details for reports from other parts of the globe. Hello there. Tanzanian President John Magufuli has pledged that this year's general election will be free and fair. He has invited international monitors to observe proceedings amid concerns of a democratic crackdown in the country. President Magufuli, who is expected to run for a second term this year, has been accused of targeting the press and his political opponent. Turning attention to Greece, where a high court judge, Katerina Sekeleropoulou, has become the country's first female president after a vote in parliament on Wednesday. 
Monday. Two opposition parties sided with the centre-right government's nomination to give her 261 votes, higher than the 200 needed. She will take up a five-year term in the largely ceremonial post in March. And Rohingya refugees who fled persecution and violence in Myanmar are praying for justice as the International Court of Justice in The Hague prepares to deliver an initial verdict on Thursday in a genocide case filed against Myanmar. More than 730,000 Muslim Rohingya fled an army offensive in Myanmar's Rakhine State in 2017. The United Nations says gang rapes and mass killings were carried out with genocidal intent. That's it from here. I am Uche Guchuku. Before we go, a quick check on the weather prospect for Thursday. That does it on the news. Thanks for watching. I am Jumai Yusuf.